Hello everyone. When you submit a research paper, there are three fundamental sections that can highly determine, regardless of what you propose, if your paper is going to be accepted or rejected. And these are the abstract, the introduction, and the related work sections. We have already made videos on how to write abstract and introduction sections, so make sure to check the playlist above. And today we are going to discuss how to write the related work section. So basically how to contextualize your work with respect to the other works that have been published in the same area. Before we start, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that this content can be made available to more students. The first question is where in a paper goes the related work section? If you look at the general structure of a paper, you will find first the abstract, then introduction, system model, problem formulation, proposal solution, results, and conclusions. So in this general structure, the related work section generally goes after the introduction. And the idea is that after you have motivated the problem, you want to clearly describe what is new in your approach with respect to what has been published before. However, sometimes the introduction already includes some of that. And if you have watched my videos before, you know that in the introduction, you're going to have a small part, a small paragraph that summarizes basically what are the novelties with respect of the previous works. So an alternative could be to put it after the results section and before the conclusions. Some people like this, some people don't like it. I do not have a specific preference and of course it depends on your taste. Finally, I want to mention that there is another option and this is typically for shorter papers, about for example six pages or less. In that case, you may merge the related work section inside the introduction since you don't have a lot of space and you don't want to spend too much time and too much space in your paper in describing the related literature. So you do it inside the introduction. The next question is where do I find the papers that I should describe in the related work section? Well, in my area, computer science and computer engineering, generally we use tools like IEEE Explore and the ACM Digital Library. And in recent years, also Google Scholar has been a very valuable tool in order to find papers that are related to what we are proposing. So one important aspect to highlight here is that you need to find the correct keywords. And sometimes these keywords may not be the exact words that you use inside your paper. So for example, let's say you're proposing something related to Internet of Things. So the Internet of Things can be seen as an extension or an evolution of what we used to call sensor networks some years ago. So maybe there could be some papers that do not use the term Internet of Things, but they may address a problem which is similar or maybe with a similar solution in the context of sensor networks. So it is important that you look at what you are proposing and find the most important keywords thinking outside the box to what has been proposed maybe in different contexts but might have solved a similar problem or used a similar solution. Then you also need to decide among all the papers that you're going to find which one you're actually going to cite and discuss in the related work because sometimes some topics are hot or have been so hot that maybe there are thousands and thousands of papers that have been published around that topic. So you need to select what are the best papers to cite and of course this should be the most relevant the most important papers and also the one that have been published in the best venues. So look at things like what is the ranking of those conferences or journals, what are the number of citations that that paper have received, and also consider the number of citations and this metric with respect to when the paper has been published. Once you have identified the papers that you actually want to describe in the related work section, something that you should not do is just to list paper by paper a small sentence about what the paper is about and that's it like without order without structure just saying this paper did this this paper did that and so on so a very interesting and informative related work section provides a taxonomy of the literature so an organization of the literature that groups the different papers that have been proposed according to, for example, the assumptions that they make or the system model that they use or the type of problem that they are considering or the solution that they are adopting, etc. And this is something that requires some thinking, some work, and you should spend time on it in order to make that section meaningful, interesting and well motivating the work that you are proposing in this paper. As you think about the structure and the organization of the papers that you want to put inside the related work section, you also should think about what is the story of this paper. This is a long overarching story that goes from the abstract all the way to the conclusions and should be consistent throughout the paper. So the related work section should contribute 
to this story. And generally, the story of the paper includes the motivation of the paper, so basically why the paper is important, why it is relevant, why it is a current problem. And then you want to say, what are the current state of the art in that domain and what are their limitations? And here is exactly where the red work section comes into play. So the red work section should contribute to the story of the paper by describing what is the state of the art and what are their limitations. In this context, it is very important to make sure that every time you reach a leaf, an end point of this taxonomy, you argue why your work is novel with respect to that specific line of research in order to motivate what is new in your work that has not been addressed before. I want to now discuss some of the common mistakes that students generally make when they write the red word sections, especially for the first times. So the first one is to set the wrong expectation. So as you describe the limitations of the current literature, you are basically building in the mind of the reader and the reviewer that something is missing. So you create an expectation. And then if you do not deliver on that expectation, you're basically creating a disappointment and you're giving the reviewer a reason to reject the paper. So make sure that you describe the existing works and their limitation with respect to the novelty and the new things that you propose in this paper. Additionally, another problem is the lack of focus. So instead of coming up with a well-structured taxonomy, the red work section lacks direction, lacks organization, and it's just a list of words that have been proposed without any specific meaningful way that leads to your paper. So it is very hard to inscribe your paper in the context of what has been proposed before and so understand what is new in your paper with respect to existing works. Sometimes also it can happen to miss some important papers, either because you didn't find them or because you forgot to cite them. Well, what you don't want to happen is that you study a problem, you give a solution, and then you do not cite a paper that clearly was studying a similar problem or providing a similar solution. Because if the reviewer finds this out, it's very easy to get the comment that this problem has been already studied before, these solutions already exist, and so the paper can be rejected. So if there are these very relevant papers, make sure to cite them so that the reviewer actually understand what is new in your paper compared to what has been already published. So do not hide citations because they are too similar. Finally, it is also important to cite the papers that come to important venues where someone is expected to find papers in that area. So let's say you are proposing a paper on energy management. So if you don't cite any paper that comes from an energy related venue, well, that would be a little suspicious and a reviewer would intuitively just go and look in those venues if there are papers that are related to that specific context. So make sure to analyze the literature and the important venues that are relevant for the problem and the paper that you are studying. This concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you at the next one. Bye.